Hello, everybody, and welcome to our daily devotional time together. I am Ali Cobb, Director of Family Ministries here at St. John's United Methodist Church, and welcome to our daily devotional time together. This is our point midday where we get to pause together as a community of faith, share in the upper room with daily devotional with one another, share in prayer, scripture, and reflection. So if you're joining me now live or a little bit later on in the day, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment below, we always like to know who stopped by. And today is Monday, October 7th, 2024, and welcome to Daily Devotional. Today we'll be in 1 Samuel, so if anybody would like to follow along at home, we're in 1 Samuel. If not, feel free to still listen along. I hope everybody had a good weekend. We were out of town for the weekend and got back a little bit later than what we thought, um, but we got back last night and everything, so... Everybody was tired this morning, to say the least. Got the kids to school with three minutes to spare, which normally we don't get it that close. Normally we're there, like, plenty of time. So, anyways, but we made it, so that's all that matters. Okay. Well, I will begin 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, and I will be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version Updated Edition. And here is your scripture for the day. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. Then ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know that the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived uh, that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Our uh, focus verse for today is 1 Samuel 3, 9 of the NIV, which reads, Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, speak. Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Our thought for today is Jesus' sheep follow him because they know his voice. And our devotion writer today is George Wilkerson from Maryland. And this is the thoughts that he is sharing with us today. Recognizing God's voice. When I first came to prison in 2006, I didn't know anyone here. When we went to meals, the crowded cafeteria would be loud, with many voices talking at the same time. It was chaotic. As I talked with the men around me, I became familiar with their individual voices to the point where I could easily identify who called me in the crowd. Similarly, I have wondered how I would recognize God's voice when so many emotions, fears, desires, and thoughts vie for my attention. But the more I read scripture, the easier it becomes to recognize God's voice. The Bible is God's word, alive and active and helps us distinguish among our inner voices, the voices of our world, and God's voice. Scripture helps us identify God's voice speaking through the Holy Spirit into the hearts and minds. Now I'm able to hear God's, God guiding me day by day, even conversing with me in prayer. I can hear when God calls out to me because I am attuned and prepared to listen. We can learn to recognize God's voices by familiarizing our hearts and minds in Scripture to God's Word with us. And our prayer, prayer focus today is Christians in Prison. Recognizing God's voice. Um, that can be a tricky one at times. 
but the more I have gone forth in this world, the more I have learned that God maybe not speaks, but moves through us in different ways. Um, like our scripture this morning with God calling out to Samuel, Samuel, um, I've never heard God specifically call my name, but I have been drawn to in life, be it at certain situations at certain points in time where it just, it's too much to be a happy accident or a coincidence. It has to be a God thing and everything. Um, and I don't know if any of you have had those experiences in your life and everything, but I always say we make plans and God laughs. Obviously God's not laughing at us for making plans, but we can have this idea, this notion of how we think things are going to go or how we want things to go. But ultimately it's God in control. It's God, you know, behind the steering wheel, so to speak. And it's through those moments that God is really leading us and guiding us. Um, it can be a little tricky at times. There are times where, you know, you want things to work out. You want them to work out the way you want them to, and you want them to work out on your timetable. And that is most certainly not the case. It does not happen like that. Um, more often than not really in everything. But I think back in my life and everything, and nothing has really gone according to my plan. Very little has actually. Um, but at the same time, I'm grateful for the way that things have become and unfolded. Um, even though our struggles in life, you know, nobody likes the struggle and everything, but even though we've had struggles in our life and everything, um, I've been able to find at least a little nugget of wisdom and everything from every, you know, situation that we've been in thus far and everything. And it's just, ultimately, it's just a comfort knowing that, you know, God ultimately has everything figured out and planned out. Um, God cares for everything, the lilies in the field and the birds and everything. So really it's just me here just trying to do as much good as I can and I'm along for the ride. But you know, we can also hear God's voices, you know, in ministry and everything. Um, we all have different gifts and talents and treasures in this world um, that we can share with one another and everything. Um, sometimes we don't, <laughs> so sometimes it's somebody telling you, I think you need to do this. Um, and that can be God's voice in a way, you know, working through somebody. Um, I remember I was at my home church growing up. Um, I volunteered in the Sunday school room and I loved volunteering there, volunteered there every single Sunday from the age of 10 to 16. Um, I was a volunteer there volunteering every single Sunday that was like the highlight of my week was you know being in the Sunday school classroom helping out and getting things ready and everything and then one morning or maybe it wasn't a morning I don't remember when but at one point um our minister at the time Belinda such a sweet 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 woman um she came up to me and she's like you're ready for your own classroom at 16. I can't believe that they did that um I did not feel like I was you know it wasn't really something that was on my radar and everything. I just, I enjoyed working with the children and everything. Um, but she gave me that responsibility to, you know, lead a Sunday school class. Um, and I did from 16 to 18, um, while I was in high school, my sophomore, sophomore, no, the junior, my junior and senior year of high school, I led a Sunday school classroom every single Sunday. I had, um, second grade, my first year and kindergarten, my second year. Um, and it was a bigger church and everything at the time. So, you know, the second graders, we had anywhere from, you know, five to 10 on a given Sunday. And when I taught kindergarten, we had like 10 to 15 on a given Sunday. It was a big classroom. Um, but I loved it and everything. And then ultimately, this is how I got into ministry. So the church that I was working at was working for a summer intern. Um, and everything to work in the children's ministry department and everything. They needed somebody who was a junior or senior in college, junior or senior in college, to um, just kind of be like the assistant to the director of children's ministry and everything to help out with vacation Bible school and summer Sunday school and some like small events and everything and Sunday mornings. And they needed, you know, somebody who was a junior or senior in high school and me being 16 <laughs> and a junior in high school at the time, you know, I read the job description, didn't really think anything of it. Well, as it worked out, they didn't have anybody that 
um, applied for the job and everything and they were looking around at, you know, who could they maybe, you know, convince, I guess, I don't know, convince, um, but, you know, pick to, you know, do this and everything. And they looked at me and they're like, we think you should do it. Uh, I was like, but I'm not a junior or senior in college. And they're like, that's okay. <laughs> junior and senior high school works good enough. Um, so that summer I interned doing, you know, children's ministry and everything, um, which is basically what I do now <laughs> um, and everything. And I learned so much that summer and everything. Um, it was like a crash course in ministry, but I learned so much that summer in my home church and everything. Um, but once again, it wasn't me taking that initiative. It was somebody within my church saying, we think it should be you. Um, so if there's ever something that you think somebody should be a part of, you, you could volunteer them. How, oh gosh, how did somebody phrase that the other day? Um, oh, I'll think of it as soon as I'm off of here, but they had a clever way of saying when somebody volunteers you. Um, I can't remember now. Okay, I'll think of it later. Man, I wish I could think of it. It was so clever. I'm back on here again tomorrow, so maybe I'll think of it between here and then, and I can share it. But anyway, so God's for word and God's voice can work through you in so many ways, and sometimes it's just somebody giving you a little nudge saying, you know, I think you should do this, and it can just open your world. So anyways, let us pray. Dear Father, Open your hearts and minds to your word. Help us open our hearts and minds to your word and scripture. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Good morning, Linda, and good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Barbara, and good morning, Debbie. It was wonderful seeing all of you lovely ladies on here this morning. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, um, and I will see you back here again tomorrow. Take such good care. Bye-bye.